gas. So we had a problem in January of 2017 where the digester was full to the extreme with the wastes and or or both with the gas. So the cover which was fixed on the primary digester came loose and we spilled 200 gallons of waste sludge material. That did not get to the Thames River. That did not get to the sound. It was between a solid and a liquid. And that was removed um, by a uh, contractor termed McVac, and the cost of that was about $2,700 to remove that. Then uh, the director had us hire an engineering firm, consulting with the mayor, to see exactly why that happened. So we hired an engineering firm, Wright Pierce. We paid them $17,500 to look and evaluate the structural, uh, the chemical, the biological, try to come up with an idea of why that why that did occur and compile an engineering report. We also notified Connecticut Deep, Department of Aquaculture, and Ledge Light. And being January, the shellfish beds were closed and obviously the beaches were closed. So they required no sampling and there wasn't a direct discharge. However, in the spring, when they start doing all the routine samples, they did that. There was no, nothing deleterious. We do an annual sample in the, in the, in the river itself usually around August, and that sample was, again, reflective of what the other departments found. Um, then um, we had to clean the remaining sludge from the primary digester, and um, we worked with Ron Juhas, who was working with the insurance company all along through this procedure. Uh, that work was completed by two vendors for a total cost of about $66,000. This is all work that's been completed. Now we have a secondary digester that needs to be cleaned, and we have an estimates for $75,000 to clean that. That work is pending. And Ron Juhas, our finance director, as well as the insurance company, has had all of these proposals and all of this information as well. So now to complete the damage, the structural damage, to the primary digester, we have a contractor online, Hart would be the general contractor. We have an estimate for his repair of 287000 All the veneer, all the brick veneer, we have an estimate of a subcontractor, which hasn't been authenticated yet by Ron and the insurance company, of about another 200000 And we have an engineer on board that would do all the design documents, would do all the inspection, and make sure that the work is all done properly, professional engineer, and that uh, purchase order is an amount of 45000 So th those are all the details. Those are all the expenses. Um, and they've been vetted, like Ron's been working really diligently with the insurance company and our people and the engineering company and contractor directly to make sure those prices are appropriate. I want to add a couple of things. When, on the digester, one of the questions is, why did it overpressure? And there is a relief valve that's there and there's a line and when they did the inspection they found that the line was clogged and so therefore it could not act in its relief of capacity and therefore the pressure built up and that's what uh, caused the, the upper lid to lift and for those of you that were here if you remember the lid was at an angle and there was a discussion as to how were we going to repair this and there was a question, and I had a concern about the structural integrity of, of the lid cover. If we would have had to replace the lid cover completely from the manufacturer, it would have been a six-month lead time and would have cost approximately $1.2 million for a new lid cover. And that was reported in one of our meetings that we talked about. Since then, we have we hired the original equipment manufacturer to come in, inspect, and certify the existing cover, and it is satisfactory. It has also since, since then seated itself. So they came in, they inspected it, said that it, it met the requirements, and we have documentation of that. That was a concern mm -hmm. that I had going down the road that we might have some sort of failure uh, down the road, but we do have documentation 
from the from the equipment manufacturer that it's going to be okay. We are still working with the insurance company. We are still working with the engineers in order to get this, uh, get the repair completed. And if you remember recently, we approved the, the authorization to, as soon as that digester is complete and it goes back on service, to put down, and we have a 21 day window to clean the secondary digester. Mm -hmm. So that'll put us back on track for cleaning those digesters. We'll put it back in the cycle. Now, one of the things, there are several things that we are doing now to uh, deal with the rags and the wipes issues. You would absolutely be amazed at the kinds of things that these guys strain out of the of the original inflow that's coming from people's houses and everything else. I mean, it's not just rags and wastewater, and it's not just wipes. I mean, it's tons of things. They found two by fours and all kinds of stuff. Now, how that gets in there, I don't know. <laughs> but if you if at our at our pumping stations, we periodically go in and we have to clean those get the rags out. We also have a mechanism where basically it's a it's a rotating drum that tries to get that tries to get the the rags and debris out of there before it gets into the digester. Sometimes we miss stuff. One of the things that we're looking at is we're looking at a uh, Kevin and his group are looking at an, another method for removing uh, foreign material when we first receive the wastewater. Another thing that you're going to see probably here in the next couple months is I'm going to ask the WPCA to put on a presentation and basically identify to the public those kind of things that you should not put into your toilets. Okay? And a quick list is don't put kitty litter in your toilet. Another thing is baby wipes. You don't put baby wipes even if things say flushable there are some things that are that whether or not it'll go down to go down the drain that doesn't matter it's about whether or not it can biodegrade and a lot of the things that they say are flushable are not biodegradable that's what's important so one of the things that we're going to do is i'm going to ask the wpca to put on a presentation and we're going to have a list and we're going to show you the kinds of things not to put into the sources because that's very important. We have done this during city day. We have handed out flyers uh, and we still get, what will happen is you'll see, see a decrease, oops, this way, you'll see a decrease and then all of a sudden people forget and it's all right, right back in there again. So we are going to do a visual. So we have visual aids and show you the brands and the kind of thing. It's not that we're trying to be brandy. We're not saying don't buy this brand, don't use this brand. You can use it, don't flush it. Put it in the trash. Those are the kind of things that we're, we're going to, we're, we are going to uh, get out so that you understand the impact. So are there other, Ron? I just wanted to clarify one thing. I, I mean, you may have said it, but the 1.3 million, that right. was the estimate from Wright Pierce originally to do the whole project that included a new cover, not just the new cover. Thank you. Sorry. So it was the entire project with including a new cover, but since then we've backed that piece out and we've kind of just kept the scope. Down. So, so, so we're we are now around uh, mid five hundred thousand. I think is that Rick? Am I close? I think we're yes. Uh, we're a little bit more than that right now, but some of these prices are still in the estimate phase, Mayor. Right. Okay. Now there was a concern that. The ratepayers were paying this, or the taxpayers were paying this. Somebody was paying this. What is the ratepayer cost, Ron? What did this is being covered through our equipment breakdown policy? Um, we had a ten thousand dollar deductible. Um, the rest of it is being covered by the insurance carrier okay. um, between Karma and Hartford State Boiler. Um, to date, we received a um, check for one check for ninety thousand, which was the original cleanup costs and the original engineering, um, the McVac and the Cinegrove. And then we've also received from Harper Steam Boiler cash advance of 
just under 460,000. That, so we have the cash funds available to keep this project going. And all of these contracts that Rick talked about, the right and the heart, and yep. all went through <coughs> insurance companies, so they've signed off on it and they've seen everything. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but as a result of having one digester now, we had increased uh, sludge removal, biosolid removal to Cinegro, and those are being covered by insurance as well, right? We, we haven't gone through, I think they're working working on seeing what the increased loads were, but yes, those and, will be. And I think there was some labor that was also covered, right? The, if the overtime for that Sunday, when it occurred, that piece of it was covered, nothing during the regular hours. Right. So that's what I wanted to make sure that we got out, that <coughs> the $10,000 um, deductible that we have is pretty much where we're at and everything else should be covered by insurance. Okay. Counselors, do you have any other questions or comments on that? Does that, uh, Counselor Depot? So they are paying that out, but also now our insurance is going up us. Our, our insurance is going up, but it's not. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's going up partly because of this claim. Partly, partly because of this claim, but it's also partly because of some other claims that we had as well, and partly because of other factors that are outside of our control. For example, the the uh, the hurricane in Houston and and other places. So insurances in general are going up. So this is not our insurance increases not just due to the digester. There's, there are multiple factors. Did that answer yes. your question? Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this? Director, you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Director, good day. Could you want me to review what we're foreseeing for schedule as we discuss? Yes. Please. So, so currently the plan is um, based on input from last month here or at the, uh, the cow meeting we're actually moving ahead and doing the utility budgets using the PAF inside the utility in the city budgets moving forward without the PAF in that so moving forward with that what we're going to be doing at the utility commission this month is doing a presentation of, ex of exactly what you guys will see at the next cow so that the utility commission and city council is up to speed and seeing the exact same thing in order to move the budgets over which will also move the procurement policy that's the major difference is that once you move over to the utility the procurement policy changes meaning that if the maintenance and the activities are in the budget process it actually allows the money to flow without asking for permission every time it's more than ten thousand dollars it moves that limit up to fifty fifty thousand dollars which you're very well aware um, so and then if you have a plan you have a maintenance plan you execute it based on the way it was budgeted so um, we're currently doing the budgets that way the due part of that will be two ordinances. One ordinance will move the WPCA to the Utility Commission. The other ordinance will set guidance as to how user fees will be calculated. One thing that I did want to address is I, had, I have said in the past that moving the WPCA from the general fund to the utility will allow us to do some infrastructure projects that we've been unable to do. That does not mean that we have not performed infrastructure projects. We have performed infrastructure projects. As a matter of fact, we had a $6 million bond that we had where we did some major work on the WPCA, and that's what we were doing. What I said was I did not want to raise taxes in order to just uh, maintain infrastructure because the political will is not there of the council and the uh, electorate at large have talked about keeping their taxes down. So that's one of the reasons that I did that. 
Um, now though, that it will go under fees, then that will allow them to collect fees, put some aside, and then have it set up so that we have like a reserve, for lack of a better term, so they could take on larger projects and, and can also bond if necessary. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay. Uh, is there any old business? Is there any new business? For that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. And we'll be adjourned. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Oh, no, never mind. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Sentence? Motion carries. We are adjourned.